in token engineering. It was kind of a, a, a quiet year for the TEC uh, as we started to build up, but we did a lot of uh, really amazing things. Uh, but to start off, I really wanted to uh, start off with what we call praise, um, something that we haven't done in a long time. And this is just going to be a verbal praise. It's not, you know, if you feel like wanting to type in the praise in our Discord channel, please do so. But I wanted to get back to this kind of verbal praise and making sure that we are recognizing the work of each other. Um, so uh, I wanted this to be a special one for the year of 2023. So really, I want you to focus on if there's anything that you want to praise uh, anybody else in the community for, uh, for their work in the year 2023 uh, in the token engineering ecosystem, uh, please do uh, that. Um, so <laughs> I'll give you an example. Um, so I'll start off right now with a, a couple minutes of going through praise. Uh, I first want to praise uh, Gideon. Uh, you have been a backbone for this uh, token engineering community for a very long time, especially in this past year, as you went through this transition from uh, kind of this DAO structure into a smaller coordination team, you handled that transition with grace and kind of been the de facto leader uh, of, of, of the TEC in a lot of ways. And you've guided so many people uh, through this transition and uh, we wouldn't be here without you. So I wanted to send mad praise to you uh, for that. Um, uh, also, Bear and Isaac, uh, you guys came into the TEC um, on this coordination team and really just took up leadership roles and ha handled handled new roles as they uh, evolved and adapted throughout the year, and you know uh, made made the grants program what it is. Um, and then I want to thank Tam, uh, especially for um, all the work that you've done uh, with TCAN and the advisory group and transition helping with the transition for. Uh, the coordination team and so um i'll go ahead and i'll pass it over to um how about wonka how you doing man thanks nate great to be uh praising again here uh verbal in the tc i love i love it um yeah i i would like to praise um both uh you nate and tam um because i feel that um I have a, a, a strong connection with you. I remember, Nate, you uh, gave me a book. I read it. I loved it. And uh, um, Tam's coordination like, has been a cornerstone also of uh, the cultural build, the hatch, the common subgrade of the TC and of many other projects in the space. Um, I'd also like to praise uh, Gideon and Antti and Bear for the coordination that they've been running this, this past uh, year and, and also um, all the openness to feedback and, and, and humbleness um, and courage um, to carry on with, with this um, huge responsibility. And um, I'd also like to praise Jean. Gene, um, because I feel that um, he's someone that has contributed a lot to the TEC in the in the in the past years, and I love uh, to see you here uh, today. And I'll pass it to Wajiji. Thanks, Juanca. Um, great. I'd love to praise Nate for leading the events with the TEC. I always enjoy his uh, style of hosting events, whether it's Twitter spaces or here in the server. And I would like to praise NT, although he's not here, uh, for running the quadratic funding rounds, the TE grant rounds throughout 2023. He was very on point with that. It took a lot of detail, orientation, focus, and time and he did that while he was coordinating a lot of other projects here in the TEC as well so praise to Enti um yeah pray I, I mean I want to praise everyone here like praise Tamara Gideon uh Juanca Bear Jean and and just everyone who's like been here for so long in such a consistent way uh, i'm always so impressed and i'm always continuing to learn more things from the team here in terms of working styles and dynamics and techniques and processes and just ways of communicating so um yeah praise praise and um praise to bear for really stepping up lately bear has been 
really carrying a lot of the coordination um, over the past few months. And uh, yeah, I feel a lot of praise today. So I, I'll pass it on. I'll pass it over to uh, Gideon. Thanks, bye, Gigi. Um, I'll put my camera on. Uh, so I would, I would really like to praise Bear as well. This, you know, Bear is like become the heart of the TEC. Um, he just cares so much and uh, bears bears so <laughs> bears so much um, of of uh, the work and just the kind of like the caring of like making sure that things are done right. And um, speaking of that, I also really want to praise Tam. Um, I mean, Tam has been here for a very long time, and I cannot quite figure out how you still manage to just care so much uh, about <laughs> what happens here. It's really um, very touching, and you're just so damn smart in your opinions. I, I always turn to you for advice. Um, and uh, YGG? Um, man, the stuff that you're doing on the tunable uh, quadratic funding, that tool is incredible. And um, I, I really think that that is going to end up being kind of the backbone of a lot of the key to the future success of the TEC. Um, there's so many other people I'd like to praise. Um, Nate, thanks for uh, your just your enthusiasm about the events. Um, and uh, and Juanca, actually, also I want to praise you too. Um, you, you know, we've we've kind of we've gone through kind of a difficult time in the TEC, um, but also you know had a had a good time. We've had to kind of retrench and stuff, but you are always here reminding us of the cultural roots and to not forget that, not to forget the culture build, and we will not. Um, I really do not want to forget that. We've had to kind of like we've had to kind of like consolidate, but um, and you know focus but that's that's still there and you are always a, a great reminder of that thank you so i will pass it to um i'll pass it to bear yeah thank you Gideon. um well first of all i think i i share everything that has been mentioned all the single praises that have been already said uh i think i i can just I could just repeat them because I, I really feel a lot of appreciation uh, for everyone here. Every single one of the people in this call have taken a, a part of the TEC journey at some point and have contributed that oh. in, in some way. So um, I just I just appreciate that. I big praise to to Gideon, uh, big praise to Tom for being these amazing leaders, advisors, mentors. Uh, colleagues and i would also call friends um same with nate and isaac uh, a massive praise for being such great collaborators and always being supporting each other and being there to to be able to to move things forward and uh, be there in in the in the difficult times that that we've been through so uh big praise for that big praise for ygg uh, to juanca uh, for plugging back into the tc and figuring out a way to to have impact and to contribute to to the development of the commons uh that's always super appreciated so yeah uh, a general praise to to the whole community for for all the work that has been put into into making this what it is uh, and to setting all kind of like the the basis uh for what could become in the future so really excited about that um and I'll pass it on to um, uh, who's missing. Uh, Nate. I can take uh, it. Tam? Yeah, take it. Um. So, gosh, where to start? I feel like I could probably take up the whole hour doing this, and I'm going to try very much not to. But I'm going to start um, because uh, Isaac isn't here. Let me start with Isaac. Uh, who has just developed so fast and um, has contributed so much to the TEC. Um, I feel like he's become somebody that I go to to ask questions about token engineering, and uh, I really enjoyed uh, the time that we've worked together too. I want to um, 
uh, praise the people that have really been integral to the OP migration. So them, of course, um, Jordi and Ping Lu, who worked on the, the ABC and Launchpad MVP, uh, Isaac, Bear, Griff, Gideon, um, really the migration couldn't have happened without all of the work that you guys put in. Um, I'd like to praise Atta and Alp and the inverter team because they're so tangential to what we're doing, but we're all going in the same direction. And the work that the inverter team is doing is uh, inverter team is doing is really extraordinary right now. Uh, I'd like to also praise some of the people that have always advised and helped, you know, Jeff and Livia and Zargum, but that aren't here in the day to day. I think that their influence is felt and also really important. Of course, the coordination team, you know, Gideon Bear. Uh, especially also YGG and Nate Efra, who's contributed, or you know, the coordination team and people who've contributed over the last year that have really made a difference. And then there's two groups, you know, we, we for the grant rounds, uh, Isaac and I put together an advisory group of token engineers to help us evaluate uh, and set criteria for projects. Uh, and that was uh, YGG, Vasily, Patty, Jeff, and Phil. And I think that um, it was an important step to include token engineering in the process of grants, uh, accepting projects for submission, as well as evaluating the projects. And then the TCAN group has been really instrumental last year too, as so many of us moved into advisory roles. Um, you know, uh, Gideon, Livia, Griff, Bear, Phil, and Decentralized SDGs uh, brought a lot of insight into that group too, as sort of uh, in particular um, focused meetings, as well as Jeff, Jess, and Sem, or especially around the uh, reserve currency token discussions. So that was really, um, yeah, I really appreciate the work that they did. And then Wonka, it's really always nice to see you and the way you express yourself is always so poignant. Uh, you know, I think you and Olivia too really helped set, like, set and carry the culture of the TEC. And I just want to praise everyone who's here now too. So, you know, the, those that don't normally show up, uh, Caitlin, Jean, who is just here, and then um, praise those who are still to come and and join the TEC and help the TEC move forward. And I'll pass to. Um, who didn't go? Nate, did you go? K Caitlin's last. Oh, you started. You yeah, Caitlin. Shot, Caitlin. Can, you can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Caitlin. Um, I know I realize most of you on this call probably don't know me, but I've been working with the Token Engineering Academy, leading their marketing and communications efforts. So my praise would be to the really to the entire token engineering commons team for all of your support to TE Academy last year, especially all of your support, whether it was with the TE bar camp, um, the funds in the early days of CAD CAD GPT, as well as our collaboration in the final days um, in the retro PGF campaign. It was very helpful and very appreciated from our end. And I'm really excited for what's coming forward, especially with CAD CAD GPT and a potential test case, hopefully in the Optimism Network. Um, but yeah, I just want to praise all of you for the work that you're doing and for all of the support you've provided to us. It's really meant a lot. And I Thank will you. pass it to Nate. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, it feels good to praise again. That's a, it's a really, uh, it's a really nice practice. Um, oh, and uh, we have Fitzy back on. Uh, Fitzy, uh, did you want to participate in this praise round? Hey, sorry, sorry about that. Um, this is my first time uh, joining a community call. I, I follow you guys on Twitter, and I, I don't know uh, a whole lot. I, I just had to pick up a call, so I think that's why I cut out and uh, joined back in. Uh, I wouldn't know where to start in terms of who to praise, but uh, Praise being in crypto and and working with great people on on positive sum games and it sounds like you guys have a great little community here so I'm interested in learning about what you guys are doing and uh, seeing if there's any uh, overlap with what I'm interested in and uh, what value I bring to the table so great to meet you all. 
Absolutely. Thank you for, for coming in and, and, and listening in. We're glad to have you here. And if you have any questions at any point in time, don't hesitate to ask. OK, uh, yeah. So praise is just kind of we go around a couple minutes and we offer praise to anybody who's contributed uh, within our day to day lives, our, our work, you know, in the token engineering ecosystem. And we make sure that we kind of recognize the work that they've done. Uh, so, yeah, um, if there's anybody you want to do, you can do it now. Uh, otherwise, we'll get started. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I, I've been, uh, obviously, I don't know you guys within this community, uh, but uh, I, I've been working with an open source project called uh, Revnet, uh, which is working on kind of community uh, fundraising. It's an offshoot of, uh, of Juicebox. And so uh, there's a, a community member within that, Django, who is the uh, leader of Juicebox. Um, and he's been a tremendous help to me and support. And we just got off a call and uh, just talking about a personal situation that I had. So I just wanted to give praise to him in terms of all the support and leadership that he's been offering. Uh, and uh, also to my friend Cam, who uh, I've had some great conversations with recently and has been a great support to me. So slightly unrelated, but I want to offer them some praise. That's really awesome. Thank you for thank you for sharing that. That's really great. Um, it's always good to get new praise in here and, and to hear, hear about new newcomers' uh, experiences. Uh, so thank you for joining us. Um, with that, yeah, thanks so for having me. Gonna, yeah, yeah. With that said, we're going to get started. We're going to have a little bit of a review of the TEC in 2023, what we went through, um, uh, kind of understanding the OP migration that we went through, the formation and role of uh, TCAN, and our operations and hiring. And then kind of a little sneak peek for next month, we'll have the TE stakeholder study. Uh, being presented by uh, Lisa Walken, and she's uh, really excited to share all of the findings that they've had in the, the TE stakeholder study. Uh, but to start off, uh, we're going to take a look back at 2023. Um, it's It was a, a, a great, great year. At the end of 2022, we kind of went through this transition phase uh, where we moved away from a lot of the working groups. We wind down a lot of the working groups um, and, and started to, you know, um, um, focus a little bit more on uh, our coordination team uh, and, and kind of consolidating our efforts uh, to be a little bit more efficient, a little bit more productive, a little bit more lean during this, the, the bear market. Um, and so at the beginning of 2023, we started the coordination team. Uh, the purpose of the team was to create greater cohesion and impact for our mission uh, to improve cross-functional coordination, increase flexibility and resource efficiency reduce operating costs, increase clarity of expectations and accountability, and help contributors develop and find inspiration and meaning. Uh, so the coordination team became a, a small group of individuals that kind of spearheaded a lot of new initiatives uh, that we were going to focus on. And one of those is going to be the uh, kind of the, the focal point, which is our token engineering grant program. Uh, during the year 2023, we held three different uh, grant programs three different grant rounds in, in partnership with Gitcoin. Uh, the very first one that we held was with the beta round uh, with their Allo protocol. Uh, and so we had a, a great token engineering grant round one. Uh, we, we had a 25K matching pool, 30% uh, matching cap. And we actually applied a something called a T matching boost. Um, and it was really awesome. We had 16 awesome projects, a lot of donors, um, around $6,000 uh, uh, donated uh, with that 25K matching pool. And one of the things that we were really proud of is that we got to test out the TE matching boost, which is kind of the basis for uh, what YGG has been working on for uh, the past year uh, with the tunable QF. Um, and we were kind of the first and only round to experiment with the benefits of donors that qualify based on a certain criteria. And so what we wanted to have was token engineers who are donating to our, our, our grant rounds to actually have a little bit more weight and say what the priorities are in terms of funding. And so this is really important to us that we have kind of expertise uh, embedded within the decision making on how these funds get allocated during our grant programs. And perhaps YGG, I don't know if you're okay with um, kind of discussing a little bit about Q, uh, tunable QF or um, kind of these matching boosts that we, we performed during the first three rounds. Sure, Nate, thanks. So yeah, Tunable QF is a software product that we've been building to help facilitate applying this matching boost to 
donations coming from donors who qualify as subject matter experts. And we're using token signals as a proxy to indicate subject matter expertise. So we're using two tokens uh, that are being injected into that process as signals. Those are the TEC token. So we take uh, holding TEC token as an indication of token engineering subject matter expertise. We also take um, TE Academy credentials, which are NFTs, as indicating token engineering expertise. Uh, we combine these two signals. So in the very first round, um, donors would get a boost if they either had more than 10 TEC tokens or they held any Academy credentials. But we wanted to first understand the impl implications of what that means and how that's going to affect the outcomes of the quadratic funding mechanism and the distribution of the matching pool. So we started doing some data science analysis. That's what led us to build this tool. And we built a tool that allows you to sort of customize those signals and how they are boosted. So now, just in, instead of just saying either you have TEC tokens or you have Academy credentials, we can do an additive boost. So if you have TEC tokens and you have credentials, then those can amplify. Those two signals will amplify each other and you'll get more of a boost. And then we can explore the impact of how much we turn that boost, depending on how much we turn that boost up, um, how is that affecting the outcome of the funds? And we can do some deeper analysis, like the network structure of the donors. Um, because if you think of this as a, as a graph with nodes and edges, you have two types of nodes, which are, which are donors and projects. And it's a, it's a bipartite graph where edges are donations. And so you can start to look at the structure of that network and you can understand the placement of the subject matter experts across that network. And you can start to see the cluster of what projects subject matter experts are donating to and then what effects you can have by turning up that boost. Um, there's an open source repository with this tool and I'll post the link in the chat in this uh, channel. And this documentation has been updated recently, so you can go, go through this. There's instructions on how to use the tool, um, how to plug in a, a custom round with custom data sets, and a little bit of background on the mathematics of what's actually happening with the boost. And then also a few examples of what it looks like uh, when you run this tool. And so this, this is the main output of the app, which at the top we see token signals being combined, that red and blue, it represents TEC tokens and Academy credentials and how those signals are combined. And down below we see a funding outcome, which is a distribution of funds. And the gray areas indicate the difference between boosted and not boosted. Well, it's the difference when you apply the boosting mechanism. And on the left, you have all the parameters that can be modulated uh, to apply this boost. And we think of this as sort of an early stage work on what we're calling a reputation economy for the TEC. So we're taking TEC tokens and TE Academy credentials as indicating reputation. We're interested in adding additional signals like praise, um, and, and other signals that could be incorporated into this. It also allows you to apply custom quadratic funding mechanisms, like you can apply the default QF, uh, or you can apply cluster mapping, which is what Gitcoin is now applying in their rounds. And um, different mechanisms have different attributes, like being more Sybil resistant, and rewarding the cluster mapping in particular rewards pluralism so it rewards 
people who are unique. It kind of says like, if two people have donated to the exact same set of grants as each other, then they're almost like they're the same person. So if you donate to a completely unique set of grants, you get a bit of an extra boost. And so you can plug and play different QF mechanisms and then see how the signal boosting can affect the outcomes. And it's not shown here, but there's also a network analysis page. And this is, we're, we're having some discussions with the TE Academy to work this into some future curriculum around reputation tokens and the upcoming learning season, which I think is tentatively planned for around May. Thanks, Nate. Yeah, yeah that's really awesome, YTG. Yeah, and the the importance here is that, you know, we, we've been able to test this out on several different rounds, so including the very first TEGR1 uh, round that we had, um, which which netted really awesome results. We we, we had a lot of impact uh, for, from this this initial round, uh, and then we followed up. You know, uh, this this first round happened in April, and then a couple months later, uh, in August, we held our second round, our tokenizing grant round two, uh, which we also had a 25k matching pool. Um, and this one had 14 projects and nearly six thousand uh, dollars raised from donors. Once again, uh, we used the multiplier to do the matching boost, and then you know uh, we we did it one more time, the third the ter third time, and and this was the most recent one that we had. We had the 25k matching pool as well as a, a 25k Arbitrum matching sponsorship, uh, which was really awesome. Uh, we we got some sponsors to actually uh, put put some funds down for our grant round. And uh, we had 20 projects in this one, which is a lot more than we had prior. Um, we had about 5,000. This is this one was run on Arbitrum chain. Uh, so this is kind of the first time we've tried it on that L2. Uh, and we continue to look at different options uh, for our grant rounds as we continue to build out. Um, so that was a really awesome uh, development within uh, you know last year during 2023. Uh, and so it's something to keep in mind as we move forward with uh, uh, further token engineering grant rounds. Um, another thing that we did was expanded our network a little bit. We, we started to discuss uh, a little bit of, you know, the things that we did outside of the token engineering grant rounds. But uh, operationally and within our network, we, we found a, a really you know, a lot of successes. Uh, especially within things like the bonding curve research group. And this is something that also YGG is a, a significant part of. Uh, the bonding curve research group uh, kind of established the foundation for continuous research development and education around bonding curves. They've had uh, great, great speakers to come and, and educate uh, the community on what bonding curves are, their application, and, and what, what, what they can provide on you know, uh, weekly to monthly basis, they, they've been able to, to provide this type of content. And I don't know if YGG, if you have anything that you want to add to, to the bonding curve research group, I know that they're going to have study sessions that are upcoming uh, in, on Thursdays uh, throughout the month. Is that correct? Thanks, Nate. Yeah, just briefly, uh, we were able to host three really good series last year. Uh, we hosted one on um, system design, of complex systems by octopus uh, we hosted a series from mark richardson from the carbon protocol previously bancor and uh, he gave really a like foundational textbook uh overview of the foundations of bonding curves and then we had a series from with stefan from gyroscope labs and he gave an overview of gyroscope and the uh liquidity density mechanisms that they've been working on there very impressive stuff um i was blown away like this you know we weren't sure where this bonding curve research group was going to go but we got such top caliber people to come in and give presentations so we want to do a lot more of that in 2024 and we have migrated those sessions into the tec discord server now so you can catch those here on thursdays we have a series coming up with baseline protocol and we've just been trying to schedule because their uh, main, the person who's going to present is in Taiwan, which is like, uh, it's kind of hard uh, to make that time zone work. But yeah, stay tuned. We'll have a series coming up with uh, baseline protocol um, coming up soon and lots of good stuff coming out of the BCRG this year ahead. 
Yeah, it's really awesome. And if you get a chance to, to attend a study session or to go to one of their, you know, speaker events, uh, the, the the quality of, of the BCRG is fantastic. I mean, if you want to learn something, uh, the, the BCRG is the place to be. Um, so uh, big praise to, to everybody involved in the, the bonding curve research group. Um, another development that we had during the 2023 year was uh, the formation of the TCAN or our Token Engineering uh, Commons Advisory Network. Uh, this is something that's very important for the, the coordination team and our new structure uh, that we had. And perhaps, uh, Tam, I don't know if you have any comments on the, on the formation since you were, you were a big part of the, the TCAN network and how they have developed. Sure, of course. So over the course of last year, you know, as the um, as the coordination team was forming and working groups were and stewards were retiring um, or the concept was retiring, uh, there was a need for there to continue to be sort of advisors and support for the coordination team, but people that had either history and or experience, but were not really involved in the day to day. So the TEC advisory network was formed out of that idea. A lot of the think work, uh, I really can credit to Gideon and Bear as well. It certainly wasn't just me. And um, the there is a forum post about it um, on the TEC forum. But the strategy members were uh, Bear, Gideon, myself, Livia, Griff, and YGG. Uh, and we were opening up certain specific sessions with subject matter experts to handle more complex issues uh, and to bring in some more outside perspective as well when that uh, when that was really needed. Um, yeah, that you know the idea of the network was that um, there is going to be a lot of need for advice to the TEC. And strategic direction was the first need. And so that was the first group that was formed. But you can imagine uh, there being other, other TCAN groups uh, within, within the advisory network for any other, um, you know, any other point that might be needed. One of, the, one of the early ones that we thought about were treasury management or reputation. And uh, you could imagine advisory groups sort of spinning up and retiring as they are needed or not needed. I'll yeah, pass so back the, to you, Nate. Yeah, so uh, just a question. So these would act kind of uh, as kind of like a task force almost uh, in terms of uh, kind of having a, a group of advisors that can kind of come together and advise on specific subjects and then, then dissolve. Is that right? Well, the, the purpose is multifold. First, to get outside opinion from outside opinion, so opinions of people that are maybe not in the day-to-day, -day, but to have a structure for that to happen, so to have a, a feedback loop in place. Um, the meeting is happening once a week. Uh, it had been two hours, but now we're switching it to one hour. And the other um, purpose is to have the advisors also act as advocates for the TEC outside of TEC uh, and, and uh, uh, ecosystem circles. Um, I don't, maybe you can call it a task force. I, I really think it's just an advisory advisory group. So the strategy advisory group has been discussing the TEC strategy and in collaboration with the coordination team for execution on the strategy. But you could imagine imagine that other um, other groups would be necessary for specific initiatives within the TEC. It hasn't happened yet, but the, the idea of having a network um, is to create space for new advisory groups to emerge as they're needed. Yeah, that's really awesome. And the, the, the value that they've brought so far to, to the TEC has been invaluable. So like, thank you. Thank you so much for spearheading that and, and making sure that, you know, uh, we have uh, good, good pathways for advice uh, within this community. Um, so uh, one of the, the biggest uh, news that we had within the TEC is our migration to Optimism. We were formerly on Gnosis Chain, uh, and that means we had all of our token infrastructure on Gnosis Chain, uh, including our augmented bonding curve that used wrapped XDI as our reserve currency. Uh, we had gardens, we had conviction voting, we had all of these uh, uh, neat little details that we went, went through the process of, you know, evaluating why we needed to actually migrate to a different chain and 
optimism was the most ideal chain to look at because uh, one, we were very much value aligned with their public goods outlook. Um, and two, uh, it, it provided easier access to tokens. A lot of people had uh, issues uh, kind of migrating over to Gnosis chain, kind of a, you know, a, a side chain uh, to Ethereum. Uh, and being on a layer two makes it much easier to gain access to our token to uh, perform you know, on-chain operations. And so we're really excited about the idea to migrate to Optimism. So we had a community vote on that, uh, which passed. And we currently, at the beginning of this year, had successfully migrated our entire token economy over to Optimism. Um, but you know, during that time, we had to have a, a big debate on what our reserve currency was going to be. Uh, one of the big concerns that we had was with wrapped XDAI and in particular DAI as a, a, a stable coin currency as our reserve, and whether that was uh, suitable for what we were trying to accomplish here in the TEC and with the augmented bonding curve in particular. And so we had a, a, a great reserve currency debate. I encourage anybody who um, is interested to see how we came to this decision and, and kind of the thought behind it um, to actually kind of come to this forum post and, and just read through it. There was, it was a great debate between a lot of different people, a lot of different stakeholders. And we came to the conclusion that we wanted to have uh, an interest bearing uh, token as our reserve currency. And uh, one of the only ones that I, I particularly know of that, that have uh, an interest bearing um, token uh, as a reserve and we chose rocket pool safety. So our ETH is currently our um, currency uh, that is backing the reserve to our augmented bonding curve. We had migrated every every TEC token from Gnosis chain to Optimism. And so everybody has, if they have their wallet, if you are updated on this uh, advancement that we have, um, you should show your TEC token should show up. There's nothing that you have to do. You just have to check your wallet on Optimism Chain, and they should be there. Um, so uh, the great thing about this is that we now have a new interface for our ABC swap. Um, this is uh, something developed by Common Stack, which is really awesome. Um, and you can switch out your TEC for our ETH, and it's a really cool, really cool interface. Um, I encourage if you haven't traded on it yet, please go ahead and do so. It'll show you your entry and exit tributes as, as before. And yeah, it's it's been a really awesome uh, migration. I don't know if uh, Tam or uh, Ginnon, you have any notes on the migration itself or things that individuals need to uh, keep in mind uh, about you know working with the TEC tokens on Optimism. I mean, I think you've pretty much covered it, Nate. Okay, cool. Yeah. And if you do have any questions or concerns or, you know, wondering, you know, why you can't access, you know, uh, TEC liquidity on Gnosis, uh, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to anybody here in the Dis TEC Discord server or to contact anybody on the coordination team. We will gladly walk through uh, all this new infrastructure for you. Um, with that being said, we have a lot of, uh, you know, interesting um, developments happening in 2024 as we start to move forward. Um, one of those is the operations and hiring. I'm going to let pass this over to Bear as he is, um, you know, he, he's been spearheading the operations of the TEC for the past year and is uh, kind of spearheading the, the entire 2024 initiative as we move forward. Um, so, Bear, pass it to you. Yeah, thank you, Nate. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just gonna keep this really short. Um, you know, we've been going um, through a really interesting process to define the strategy for the TEC in 2024. Uh, and as part of that, one of the realization is that we'll need to increase our, our capacity uh, as, a, as a team with the coordination team and, and as a DAO with all the different priorities and initiatives that we like to to spin up or, or continue developing like the grass program. So this is more kind of like just a, a teaser uh, that if, if you are interested, uh, just stay tuned that we will be um, sharing more information really soon about the uh, recruiting process for different type of roles in the in the coordination team. Uh, and, and if that's something that you might uh, find interesting, 
uh, you'll always be uh, welcome to to apply and and to get more involved so besides that um there's not much to say to, there's not much to say to be honest um well like uh, this uh, another news that maybe some of you already already knew <clears throat> isaac that he's been um taking part of the coordination team since its formation um uh, he he decided to take on 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 a different career opportunity uh so starting this new year the 2024 he's no longer part of of the coordination team but we're really happy that he's still gonna get continue getting involved uh in a different fashion uh, as part of the TCAN this advisory network and we'll be able to continuously get his his input his advice and his really valuable opinions so although he's not here we we still always wish him the the best in his future endeavors and again just happy that he can that he can continue getting involved um yeah besides that uh, i don't think there's much to say right now again just um stay tuned for any further announcements in the forum um i think that'll be our uh, our main communication channel for these type of things uh and yeah i think that's that's all for me passing back to you Nate. yeah thank you Barry, and yeah thank want to send praise to Isaac for all the work he's done for the TEC coordination team. I'm really happy for for him and and his new endeavors that he's he's ongoing uh, with his new new gig. So uh, congratulations, Isaac. Um, with that being said, I, I want to you know, uh, Caitlin, you we have you here right now, and so I, I wanted to see if you wanted to actually if if there's anything from the Token Engineering Academy that you wanted to provide updates for um, anything exciting new on the horizon that you want to to kind of uh, share with the, the token engineering community yeah sure thanks nade for the opportunity so there's obviously a lot to share that i would i would really like to share now but some of the final details are still being ironed out but some um i guess a interesting update will be that we've um we're going to continue our token engineering reads newsletter. So this is share continuing to share the best resources in the token engineering space, usually um, every other week with a particular theme. And we've just welcomed on board Tokenomia Pro as a sponsor for the token engineering reads going forward, as well as supporting some of our programming. But it was also mentioned um, earlier in this call, we're putting together what we're calling studying seasons. So these are going to be, um, let's say, a unique, we're looking at four to six week learning program with different um, opportunities, different sessions on different topics in the token engineering space to provide a lot of value to our students, especially in the next several months. So stay tuned for more details on our end as well. Um, not quite ready to share the final program yet. Um, sorry, one other thing I just remembered. So we're going live at ECC again this year with another token engineering track, which is really exciting. Uh, we have a space four times as big compared to last year. So we have some new, um, new capacities, new um, programming to work with. And the, pro the ticketing uh, will be live on February 15th. So mark your calendars. We'll also be putting together um speaker applications together with ECC so if you're interested in speaking on the token engineering track applications do open on February 15th as well so just make sure you have that date noted down in your calendar also noting that ECC will be in Brussels this year and not in Paris um so just off the top of my head those are some quick updates but of course as always um I'm assuming most of you are in the TE Academy Discord um, if you are, make sure you're also following us on Twitter. We usually post our updates there first. Thanks for providing a platform. Yeah, thank you, Caitlin. I really appreciate all the work you've done with the TE Academy and getting their their message out. So uh, really appreciate that. And likewise, we have a lot of uh, news on the horizon with the 2024 strategy that will be coming up soon. We will finalize within the you know next month or so. And so hopefully when, next time we talk, we'll have a a uh, comprehensive strategy plan for you guys to share with. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, we're looking forward to everything that's gonna happen with the TEC in 2024. And I really appreciate everybody attending today and uh, uh, wish you guys the, the best of luck and, and hopefully we see you again next month. So uh, thank you everybody.
Thanks, Kate. Thanks, everyone. Okay, cool. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Nate. Thank you. Thank you.